Samsung just released the thinnest non-folding phone in the world that you can actually buy, and it's called the Galaxy S25 Edge. But as you can imagine, there are some massive trade-offs with making such a thin phone. So is the future of smartphone tech worth it? Let's find out. As the name suggests, the S25 Edge is incredibly thin at just 5.8 millimeters front to back. But while this is the thinnest non-folding phone, Samsung's Fold 6 is actually 0.2 millimeters thinner when it's unfolded compared to the S25 Edge. So if you've held a Fold 6, expect a pretty similar thickness to the S25 Edge. The good news is that despite the thinness of the Fold 6, it's surprisingly rigid, so I'm personally not concerned with the S25 Edge bending in a back pocket especially with the titanium frame, which is something that the Galaxy S25 and S25 Plus didn't get. More impressive than the thickness is the weight. The S25 Edge tips the scales at just 163 grams, which is only one gram heavier than the Galaxy S25, but with the same 6.7 inch screen as the S25 Plus. And I think this is gonna be one of the biggest selling points for the S25 Edge. And fortunately, despite the thinner design, we still have fast wireless charging, and we also keep the IP68 dust and water resistance. Protecting the front of the phone is the brand new Corning Gorilla Glass Ceramic 2, which is specifically made to be extremely thin, yet still durable. And on the back, we get Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which is what we had on the S25 and S25 Plus. But unfortunately, there's no anti-reflective coating like we have on the S25 Ultra, which does make a dramatic difference in visibility on bright days. That said, we still get a max brightness of 2600 nits like the rest of the S25 series, so it's plenty bright enough for most situations. And Samsung does have an anti-reflective screen protector that you can purchase separately if you want to maximize outdoor visibility. For performance, the S25 Edge is using the same Snapdragon 8 Elite processor that the rest of the S25 series is using. When it comes to software features, the S25 Edge is running One UI 7 and will have the exact same features as the rest of the S25 series. If you want to see a ridiculously deep dive into all 50 plus of those features, you can click the link at the end of this video. Over the past few weeks, there have been a couple false rumors floating around about the S25 Edge that we need to address. First, there's the rumor that the S25 Edge only has one speaker on the bottom, which didn't make any sense for plenty of reasons, like the fact that you need to have a top speaker to make phone calls, but I digress. Bottom line, yes, the S25 Edge does indeed have two speakers, one at the top and one at the bottom, just like every other phone. The second, more believable rumor was that we would lose the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor and get an optical sensor in its place. Fortunately, we do keep the ultrasonic sensor, just like on the rest of the S25 lineup. For storage, we get a 256 gig and 512 gig option, both of which come with a whopping 12 gigabytes of RAM, just like the rest of the S25 lineup. And during the pre-order period, you can get that 512 gigabyte option as a free upgrade. And you can also get up to $630 in trade-in credit and an extra $50 credit if you use my exclusive affiliate link in the description and pinned comment, bringing you up to $800 in savings. And since I purchase all of the products I review with my own money, using those affiliate links really helps me offset that cost. And I just wanna say a massive thank you to all of you who've been using my links. Without you, this literally wouldn't be possible. But before you get all excited and click my link for the savings and support, you need to know that there are some big trade-offs when it comes to thin devices like this. The first big trade-off is battery size. Since the device is so thin, Samsung could only fit a 3,900 milliamp hour battery. That's a thousand milliamp hours smaller than the S25 Plus's battery, which has the same size screen as the S25 Edge. But Samsung says the S25 Edge will have a quote, all day battery life. And the S25 Plus was able to get me just past two days of usage. So I am hopeful that the S25 Edge can still make it through a full day. But if you use your phone heavily, or you do like a lot of gaming or something, you may be plugging in before the end of the day. Besides the shorter battery life, Samsung's also limiting the charge speed to just 25 watts instead of the 45 watts like we get on the S25 Plus and S25 Ultra. But since the battery is significantly smaller, we may still see similar charge times. A thin design also means worse heat dissipation. So you can expect the S25 Edge to run hotter and throttle performance faster during longer gaming sessions. 
The cameras on this phone are a mixed bag. On the one side, we get the 200 megapixel one-time zoom camera from the S25 Ultra, which is absolutely incredible, especially for low light photos and videos like you saw in my S25 Ultra review. And we also get the same great selfie camera as the rest of the S25 lineup. But on the other side, we lose the three times at telephoto camera and only get a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera from the S25 and S25 Plus instead of the 50 megapixel ultra wide camera from the S25 Ultra. But that 12 megapixel ultra wide camera now has autofocus so you can use it for macro photos, something that you couldn't do with the S25 and S25 Plus's ultra wide camera. When it comes to pricing, the S25 Edge lands between the S25 Plus and the S25 Ultra, setting you back about $1,100 for the 256GB variant and about $1,220 for the 512GB variant. And both of those variants come in the same black, silver, and blue color options. But while that's pretty pricey, you can still get that $800 pre-order savings that I mentioned earlier. And Samsung's also having some great bundle deals running right now as well for even more savings. So. Who's the S25 Edge even for? I'd say it'd be great for anyone who doesn't really do any gaming and they primarily use their phone for basic things like social media, emails, web browsing, and they want a better main camera than what you'd get with the S25 and S25 Plus, while also being okay with not taking too many photos past the three times zoom level. And most importantly, someone who wants a futuristic feeling device with a large screen and doesn't mind losing a bit of battery life to get it. If that describes you, then yeah, this phone checks all of those boxes and you can save big with the links below. But if you're a gamer or you want to maximize your battery life, you might want to skip this one. And side note, yes, I am still working on the Deep Dive S25 Ultra camera review, complete with the updated digital guide that you guys have been asking for. And yes, I am finally working on getting some merch together. These samples need a bit more fine tuning before they'll be ready, but I am making progress. In the meantime, if you want to see how the rest of the S25 series phones compare to each other, you can click this video here and consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss my full review on the S25 Edge as well as that deep dive S25 Ultra camera review. And remember, Jesus loves you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.